None of the content on this or any episode of the Kratom Science Podcast, Kratom Science Journal Club, or on any page of KratomScience.com is intended, nor should it be considered medical claims or medical advice. This is the Kratom Science Podcast. I'm your host, Brian Gallagher, blog and social media writer for KratomScience.com, your source for all things Kratom. My guest returning for a third time is Jacob Gentala. He's the co-founder of the European Kratom Alliance. He has some good news about Kratom regulation in Czech Republic. And stick around towards the end. Brief but exciting news about Kratom in Southeast Asia. Czech Republic, now they were going to ban Kratom. But now they're going forward with regulating it as a psychomodular substance. There's a bill in Parliament. When would the vote be on this bill? All right. So we are expecting that now the bill will be uh, voted on by the Parliament uh, probably in September or early October. Uh, It really depends on the legislative schedule of the Czech government, but given the fact that it's been a bill that was deposited by members of different uh, members of the parliament from the ruling coalition, we can expect that uh, the Czech government will want to solve this situation relatively fast. They were going to ban it. Uh, we talked about this in the last podcast. Yeah. They were going to ban it, but now it's going to be regulated as a psychomodular substance. And mm-hmm. also HHC, which I think is a synthetic cannabinoid, is included in that. And can you explain Precisely. like one more time what a, what a psychomodular substance would be? It's like a whole new category, right? It's not mm-hmm. a drug. It's not dietary supplement. It's a whole new different category for Kratom. And, exactly. Yeah. So essentially, you know, the way how we worked it out with the Czech government, also I have to say it was like a very great initiative coming from uh, Mr. Vobodjo, the Czech drug policy coordinator, who was a mastermind behind like all the progressive policies uh, of Czech Republic in terms of like drugs and similar substances, mm-hmm. is uh, they came up with uh, this idea of psychomodular substances, uh, which basically creates this third category of something between food, something between medicine, dietary supplements, and so on. Uh, so something can be actually regulated uh, that has psychoactive uh, uh, effects. And uh, regarding if these are substances that are natural or synthetic, but uh, they have some psychotropic effects and they have a relatively low or non risk for uh, public uh, health system. So people either not really cannot get addicted to them or the less risk of the addiction is super low. Yeah. And HHC is the other one mentioned in a lot of the news reports. Uh, can you explain yes. what that is a little bit? Okay, like I'm not expert on cannabis uh, mm. by any measure. Like I'm barely knowledgeable about Kratom for God's sake. Like I just started with this business barely like two years ago. Mm. Uh, so uh, regarding HHC, as far as I know, it's a synthetic cannabinoid that is uh, uh, synthesized from THC. Uh, and eventually, uh, because it's fairly popular in terms of uh, sales in Czech Republic, uh, this also will be regulated. Yeah, is that is it like a popular thing there in Czech Republic? From what I've seen, mm-hmm, it's fairly easily accessible. Yeah. Like, you know, like, often we are talking about, say, like... Mm, the cannabis social clubs in uh, 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 Spain, or oh, we are talking about like uh, cannabis coffee shops in the Netherlands. Uh, but these are the points of sales where everything is very heavily regulated. Uh, so, you know, there is only a certain amount of weed that can be sold and so on. Uh, however, in terms of like how cannabis is being sold in uh, Czech Republic, it's relatively a wild, wild west. Like you can mm. buy it all fairly much on every single corner in Prague. 
Uh, so no, HHC is fairly easy accessible. Like I remember uh, during my recent trips to Prague for like past year and a half, it would often be happening to me that uh, when I would be on my way from the city center to my hotel, I could just stop by by a small kiosk, which had plenty of different types of cannabis. Uh, that was uh, just easily sellable since uh, I think it's like 2012 or 2016, cannabis has been decriminalized in Czech Republic. Mm -hmm. So there is this unregulated market that has been developing over there for well, quite a few years. And now with the Psychomodular Substances Act, uh, it will put some carbs on the uh, cannabis industry as well. Uh, to let it to be regulated within the borders of Czech Republic. So, for example, as far as I remember, the last version of the legislation that I was reading uh, was saying about like low potency THC, which was still in line with like the EU law and international schedules. So like 0.3% THC. Okay. Uh, but on the other hand, we have like fully regulated HHC. Uh, so who knows? Maybe in the future, there will be some higher potency of uh, THC allowed. Like, honestly, you would have to ask somebody who is dealing more with cannabis over there than me. Yeah. And you also mentioned uh, like psilocybin mushrooms might be included mm -hmm. under. Is, yes. it, is it written into the bill now or, or is it maybe like eventually? they'll be included under this yeah yeah like there is a very high chance that it will be included like you know during the unofficial talks with people from the Czech government we were mentioning that uh, mushrooms or truffles should be included over there because like psychedelic substances just fit over there perfectly but it's a matter of political will and the talks within like the coalition government so whatever they will be able to do over there, it's within power of uh, Mr. Vobodril. Like my role in consulting this uh, piece of legislation is pretty much at its end. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, you mentioned um, Vobodril. Uh, he's like the drug policy coordinator. And I noticed yes. he, he seems to have a big influence because he was meeting with everybody um in the article I read mm -hmm. and I read an interview and I, I think I just republished it in English on our, on our page mm -hmm. and, and gave the link to the original, mm -hmm. but he met with the ministry of health, state Ag agriculture and food inspection, check mm -hmm. trade inspection, um, government office. And so, mm -hmm. um, is it, was there a particular, um, governmental agency, maybe like a, a police agency that wanted to ban Kratom? Uh, because uh, it seems like everybody yeah, like, else was kind of on board with regulation. Mm -hmm. uh, so, well, generally, like, uh, if we're talking about Mr. Vobodil, like, I have to say, like, Mr. Vobodil is kind of a political superstar in Czech Republic. Mm. Uh, he is part of the government. So he has like a rank of the minister and he's responsible directly in front of the prime minister of uh, Czech Republic. So he's a very, very influential person. Uh, and he was lobbying inside the government for this legislation because it's also his brainchild, so to mm -hmm. say. Uh, but uh, when uh, we are talking about uh, governmental agencies that were problematic, uh, the uh, biggest problem we had actually with Ministry of Health. Okay, okay. Yeah, like uh, we never had problems, say, with Ministry of Commerce. There was no problems with the Ministry of Industry. There was no problem with the Ministry of Regions and Agriculture because, like, let's say some people will want to grow you know, cannabis you know, for recreational uh, purposes. So, of course, there need to be some kind of permits that allow for growing cannabis. Like, growing kratom in Europe is relatively pointless, mm -hmm. so we don't have to be worried about that. But eventually, if somebody is crazy enough, there will be a possibility to do that. Uh, there is, a, like, the Czech government is preparing a specific license uh, for just this kind of eventuality. 
Okay, okay, that's interesting. Yeah, uh, yeah. so like the only uh, governmental agency that uh, we had problems with, so me as uh, European Kratom Alliance and uh, our partners from uh, CSA Kratom, so our original partner in uh, Czech Republic, uh, that was Ministry of Health. Uh, hmm. We never could get uh, through the Ministry of Health uh, by any measures. So, like requesting meeting, uh, calling with them was fairly impossible. Whereas uh, emailing or writing to other uh, ministries or even the police actually was not a problem. Like everybody was very positive about like, hey, yes, we need to regulate that because this is a good idea. Yeah, because you said there was a lot of uh, younger people that were getting mm -hmm. a hold of Kratom, probably more so than here mm -hmm. in the United States. So that'll mm, be... Yeah. So yeah, what does the law look like? It'll be over a certain age that's allowed to buy and... Uh, oh, uh, you're getting my inner legal gig started. Like I told <laughs> you, I think in our first podcast that I graduated European law. So, oh, oh my God, uh, get ready for like a full-blown uh, TED talk. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, when it comes to psychomodular substances and especially Kratom that is going to be sold in uh, Czech Republic, uh, there are, for example, limitations on the packaging. So I think currently it's like about like 50 grams. So it's about the size, it's about the size of pack of cigarettes uh, that will be allowed uh, for sale, but there's no upper limit on how much individual can buy. But in terms of packaging, the packaging is limited to 50 grams. Uh, then uh, there's of course age uh, restriction. So you know, children, minors, people who are underage cannot buy it. So in terms of uh, all European countries and Czech Republic as well, that's 18 years old. So anyone who is below 18 uh, will not be able to buy uh, uh, Kratom as such. Uh, then uh, when it comes to labeling and uh, how it will look like in uh, Czech Republic. Those are going to be uh, black packages uh, with uh, like a ton of health warning, health information. Uh, of course, everything will need to have like a QR code that is tracing the batch and tells about like what are uh, the numbers of metragenin and 7-hydroxy in it. So this kind of stuff. And of course, everything will be very, very rigorously tested in terms of uh, how saying everything will be rigorously tested uh, in terms of like heavy metal pesticides herbicides uh, biological contaminations and so on like we are still in the process of negotiating with the government exactly what kind of tests will be allowed what about like we have a lot of extracts here will does mm -hmm. that account for like kratom extracts and maybe like the liquid shots and the stronger products? Are they mm, are they allowed okay. or probably not or not? I mean, extracts will be allowed, but uh, I don't really remember uh, what was the upper limit on the extracts because, like, oh. even within like European community, we are fairly divided on that. Uh, so, like, personally, I do not have problem with extracts. Sometimes I use them for sleep. Mm. Uh, but uh, whereas we are talking about extracts, I remember there would be an upper limit on uh, how much percent of metragenin uh, will be allowed it in. Uh, will be allowed uh, in it. Okay. Uh, but whereas it comes to other products, they cannot be flavored. So like, for example, I know that you guys in US have already like a ton of different uh, uh, eatables, uh, jellies. Uh, uh, recently, I think also we start, like also the, there is a lemonade that has been released on the market. Oh, yeah. That is water solvable. Yeah. yeah, like you came probably across that. So no, there is quite a lot of things no, that are happening over there. But in Czech Republic, uh, those things are not allowed to have like any additional flavoring. 
That makes sense. I have uh, have read mm-hmm. in reading about this, like, I forget who it was. It might have been the um, Czech um, Kratom Association or maybe the Pirate Party. They were talking about uh, information, making sure the people that consume it have uh, information. Is there going to be anything written into the law or requirements that companies provide information, information to the customers about how to use uh, kratom or the risks or anything like that yes yeah, so uh this will there will be a couple of things over here so like on the packages so uh, there will be health warnings like you know the random kind of warnings that also you get like on cigarettes so for example do not mix with other medicines or do not uh, drive or use heavy machinery yeah. under the influence of kratom uh, this kind of health warnings will be on the packages. Uh, then uh, our partners from uh, the Czech Association are already working on the website called kratomzrozumem.cz, uh, uh, which would translate like mindful kratom, where they are working on all the information that you can get. Uh, about uh, how to use Kratom, or what are the its uh, effects, and so on. Mm-hmm. So there will be definitely much more information in the future about uh, health warnings about Kratom and so on uh, that will be accessible to, cos- uh, to consumers. And also we will be collaborating with American Kratom Association uh, uh, in uh, terms of uh, the website kratomanswers.org okay, uh, yeah. where you will be able also to find some information about uh, you know, what kind of effects kratom has and so, for example there will be more information about legality of kratom in different countries because you know like Europe is a little bit behind when it comes to uh, regulating our beloved plant yeah <laughs> Um, well, so are we, jeez. Um, and, and see, that the, the problem here is, uh, I, I, you probably heard about the recent lawsuit mm-hmm. where a family was awarded $11, oh, yes. $11 million. Um, now, I was just looking at the company's website where they sold this space mm-hmm. dust, and it had a disclaimer that this isn't for consumption. Well, that's why everybody buys it. So under this psychomodular mm-hmm. law... It's it's actually being so, uh, sold as a consumable product. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. So exactly. it's like the it's law saying this. Yeah, products. because this is what we know, and this is what we know. Everybody's selling it for, but like, there's still companies mm-hmm. here that say, "Oh, well, it's for incense or something like that," mm-hmm. which is would be mm-hmm. a terrible incense. I'd never tried to burn kratom, but I, I think it would be a terrible incense. But yeah, like, I cannot imagine it yeah. as an incense. But then, for compliance sake, uh, yeah. let's say a lot of European companies. Oh, actually, I should mention about, like, I should talk about that a little bit later. Uh, when it comes to uh, Kratom, like, it's being imported as, like, a lot of different things, as either cosmetic ingredient or it's being imported as uh, a couple other things. Like, companies are relatively inventive about, like, trying to uh, import Kratom, especially to Europe, because... Uh, in last year, uh, we had a ton of problems with uh, generally bringing Kratom to Europe. And uh, there have been a couple of very uh, dangerous developments uh, for the future of European market. And uh, basically, since like last April, importing Kratom, for example, through Netherlands is virtually impossible. Like it's really impossible to get it to the Netherlands, which used to be a central hub for anything uh, inside Europe. Like Rotterdam and the Amsterdam airport were like two central hubs where you could uh, get uh, Kratom uh, instantly and then it would be shipped uh, to other uh, destinations within Europe. Now the supply chains are much more diffused, but then again, I'm much more on the legislative side of the thing, so I don't really know how it's working right now. But so there was a lot, there was a very big disturbance on that uh, since like last year. 
Yeah, I was going to ask, like, as for the rest of Europe, um, whether, you know, they, they're they looking, like, the EU might be looking at this policy and maybe possibly thinking about adopting, if it works, I'm sure they'll give it a chance to see mm-hmm. if it works, and maybe adopting, like, a psychomodular model um, throughout the EU, maybe. Yeah, it's like, well, this is something that we will be trying to do in coming years. But at this moment, um, it's a little bit beyond our capacities uh, mm-hmm. as the European Kratom Alliance. And also, we will be working with some partners who have very similar idea, including like the uh, uh, couple of European members or members of European Parliament uh, who are looking at this very favorably, but uh, we cannot really do anything until June next year uh, when there will be European elections. Okay. So maybe after European elections and after EMCDDA, like uh, European Center for Monitoring Drugs and Addiction, uh, will get new powers, uh, we might be able to do something together with them. Uh, in this regard, but at this moment, uh, uh, when it comes to competences of European Union in terms of uh, psychotropic substances, they are very, very limited. Uh, So, like, uh, EU competences over here are relatively small, and they are just relegated towards coordinating information, but EU is taking over here, like, uh, very much backseat, so we cannot do that much okay. at this uh, point in time. And I was going to ask, because I read in one of the mm-hmm. um, articles of, um, about uh, Czech Republic again, uh, mm-hmm. it, it said, uh, according to the Minister of Agriculture, there was not a majority in government to approve the ban of cra- mm-hmm. of Kratom. Um, I'm just wondering... Did, did they they need a majority in parliament to approve a ban on substances there? Uh, no, no, no. Like oh. you are mistaking here two things that were happening at the same time. And honestly, uh, like I should be ashamed over here because I wasn't even aware until last June. Uh, so like I wasn't even aware of, until like two months ago oh. that uh, something like this was happening. Uh, so essentially, uh, we were working on the Psychomodular Substances Act, uh, and we were trying to you know, lobby the government in favor of that. But what was also happening parallel uh, to this uh, was that the Ministry of Health, that I already mentioned before, uh, was trying to prohibit kratom uh, because uh, the, they couldn't find like information or the. Uh, didn't really had any willing, willingness to regulate the problem. So, you know, the easiest thing is just to prohibit something and then the problem is done. And basically uh, the government, like the co- office of the government, the cabinet uh, uh, is voting on different legislations and uh, the style of politics of Prime Minister Fiala is very you know, conciliatory. So the cabinet, uh, as the you know, group of ministers, is always taking decisions about any major legislations or any major political decisions because it's a coalition government. So uh, there are, I think, like three different parties in the current ruling coalition. Uh, so basically, the those decisions need to be made by the cabinet as a whole and voting on the potential prohibition of Kratom and HHC uh, was happening uh, by voting of the uh, government as a whole. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I was just yeah. wondering that because I was like, wow, that, w- that would be, <laughs> <that'd> be pretty <laughs> good. But uh, so is there anything anything Kratom related going on in any, any other um, countries in Europe? Oh, yes. Uh, okay. Like, oh, basically, right now we are wrapping up uh, in Czech Republic. So, like, we are still having meetings about, like, setting the standard uh, in Czech Republic. But also, this is, of course, going to be a uh, standard for Kratom across the entire European Union. Uh, so, whenever we will be trying to legislate Kratom in new country, we are going to do something uh, that will 
be having the same or you know, maybe even stricter standards of quality control than what we have already proposed in Czech Republic, just to have like, you know, uniform quality of Kratom across the entire market, because we don't want to have like 10 different standards uh, for Kratom. And uh, right now we will be uh, introducing similar legislative package in the Netherlands. Great, great. So that that would be like a yeah. psychomodular? Yes, like okay. we will be trying to introduce it again under no, Psychomodular Substances Act. Like, And there's a lot of uh, cohesion between... Uh, uh, as and a uh, couple other organizations in the country, you know, like uh, organizations of sellers and uh, patient organizations and think tanks, uh, we are thinking that it would be relatively possible. Uh, but uh, also we have to counteract what happened very recently by the statement of the current uh, Minister of Health uh, of the Netherlands. Yeah, like we will see what's gonna happen because, like, my current minister of health of uh, Netherlands, uh, I think it was Ernst uh, Kuiper, uh, he made uh, some statement about Kratom that Kratom falls under novel food legislation, so that's EU competence, and uh, we cannot just regulate it like inside the country. Uh, but uh, over here, uh, I have to, I have actually some bone to pick with uh, Mr. Kuipers because uh, uh, Kratom as a psychotropic substance is not, uh, cannot be considered food on European market. Uh, yeah. Like, uh, according to our food definitions, anything that has psychotropic effects cannot be considered food. So by this standard, even like European Food Safety uh, uh, Authority uh, stated that Kratom uh, is a psychoactive a psychotropic substance. So by this definition, we can only think that Kratom will be uh, falling under NPS, so new psychoactive substances. Okay. And basically that gives us a basis to legislate it or in the Netherlands uh, using that legal argument, but uh, it will take quite a lot of political will uh, to convince the government uh, that it's a good idea. Also, like, I don't know how much you are aware of the um, politics in the Netherlands, because like, you know, as a European Kratom Alliance, we are based in the Netherlands. Mm -hmm. So it's relatively important for us to have our home base clean. And uh, basically since like uh, a month, we do not have government. <laughs> oh, really? I didn't yes. realize that. <laughs> yeah, uh, basically uh, Prime Minister Rutte, who has been in power for more or less like 10, 12 years, uh, has uh, uh, dismissed himself uh, over some political crisis concerning refugee quotas. Oh, okay. And the coalition government fell, which means that there will be new elections in November, which kind of is also a good news for me. Yeah, yeah. If I can be candid enough, because if there will, like, I know that uh, Mr. Rutte is not going to be prime minister again, like he said, so that he's not, not going to be a prime minister. So there is a chance that there will be much more liberal party in charge. Uh, who will look with more loving eye on that what we want to propose to this country? Yeah, um, and how popular is Kratom in the Netherlands? Because I'm looking, I'm just looking up, I just put in Kratom on the Google Maps, and there's a lot, it looks like there's a lot of shops in uh, a lot oh, yes. of, close to the um, bigger cities. Mm -hmm. Yes, like uh, we can estimate, like we do not have numbers, of course, like we still are collecting numbers and uh, we are trying to see what would be like the number of the users across the entire European Union. Yeah. Uh, but at this moment, I cannot really tell you uh, how many people are taking uh, uh, Kratom uh, in the Netherlands. 
I, I can tell you it's fairly popular, but it's not as popular as, for example, in Czech Republic, where virtually like every fourth person heard about that or used it at some point. Mm. And the number of uh, core, like number of active users is like between one and two percent of population of the country. But in the Netherlands, uh, there are quite a lot of shops. So like there is a basically industrial base over here for Kratom now, which is probably one of the biggest in the, uh, in the European Union. However, I just don't know how many people take it. Yeah, yeah. Um... Yeah, that's pretty interesting. And mm -hmm. it, it's also hot, sad because if I would know, then uh, my life would be much, much more easier. Yeah. But hey, somebody needs to crunch the numbers. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. What about Germany? Uh, is kratom's legal there? Is it? Isn't it? Mm, yeah. No, like not for human consumption. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, like basically whatever I tell you about Kratom, uh, legally I am obliged to tell you that in Germany, Austria, and a couple of other countries where Kratom is permitted for sales, it's not for human consumption. So perhaps people just use it as a pain ingredient or as uh, something for the cosmetics, but definitely they cannot uh, use it traditionally as uh, the rest of people. So, like, whatever is being sold over there is not for human consumption. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. That, that's... so, yeah, Germany is a, the biggest market in Europe, that's what I can tell. But regarding uh, legality of Kratom, oh, we will see how it will work. Because, uh, like, in April, uh, we had this article that we ma uh, made in Politico. Like, uh, we managed to convince some people working for Politico to, uh, how say it? Like, we managed to not convince some journalists working for Politico to write an uh, article about Kratom. Mm -hmm. And it made a splash across uh, European landscape. So I'm aware that uh, uh, the uh, national drug policy coordinator for Germany, who is the father of legalizing uh, cannabis over there, uh, is definitely watching what is happening over there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's interesting because, I mean, we do have a kratomscience.eu page. It does say that on our page. Kratom products can't be sold as products for human consumption, and they must be labeled as such. Uh, that's a problem with uh, here with the uh, the company selling space dust uh, to this woman mm -hmm. who, without any uh, instructions on it whatsoever, mm -hmm. they did have on their website yeah. you shouldn't take more than zero point two grams. Mm -hmm. Friend of ours, we're starting a thing called the Botanical Action Network. Like right now, we're helping people who have been arrested for kratom and uh, help them mm -hmm. get a get a fair trial and try to get some of the laws where it's illegal to be lesser mm -hmm. lesser crimes because you can buy a lot of kratom for personal use but they're charging oh, it yeah. as though it's the same as cocaine heroin in some of these states like yeah. Al alabama it, it's, it's oh yes a, i've heard yeah, yeah I've there's heard a, that some parts in alabama are just crazy about oh that. yeah and i have to say this is a really great initiative because like you no know, just punishing people for not consuming something that is not necessarily dangerous shouldn't be a reality in 21st century yeah and i know there are european countries where it's banned well i mean like the united kingdom is the half of is europe a big one yeah half yeah you know, like half of europe literally half of europe like it's uk it's italy it's france italy uh, that's right Cyprus, france. Oh, okay. uh, greece like uh, i can name you like numbers of countless countries that actually have the go and none uh, like, uh, say, if not the current problems in the Netherlands, uh, now where we are basically uh, trying to uh, act on uh, and regulate the sales of Kratom over here, uh, it's uh, otherwise we would try to decriminalize Kratom in Poland. Yeah. Is there any movement anywhere to maybe um, decriminalize 
No, no, unfortunately, no. Like, <laughs> no, we still have to like establish like a lot of different things regarding kratom, because yeah. you know kratom in Europe is still a very niche substance. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's. I mean, it's getting it's getting more popular here in the United States, but unfortunately, mm -hmm. this story that came out and. You know they don't they don't differentiate mm -hmm. between kratom extracts. They don't mention that this woman had uh, uh, heart problems that she didn't know about, um, genetic yeah, like, heart uh, problems that her father also suffered from, mm -hmm. um, and they don't say that it's extract. They just say kratom, uh, and you know. Oh yeah, like if it was extract, then holy yeah. shit. Yeah, and and I think you know she mm -hmm. took. Uh, probably four grams where you're supposed to take uh, a quarter of a gram uh, she so she took mm -hmm. she took a very very um high dose i believe mm -hmm. um that it seems what the evidence shows so that's yeah because like no, yeah like normally no, kratom is in its natural form is just impossible to overdose but if it's an extract yeah. Uh, yeah, we're talking about different story over here yeah, yeah. Um and I know uh I I did interview a guy uh from the UK. Um uh, he's an American living in living in England and he said he did mm -hmm. um go, he <laughs> used to go to Amsterdam to to mm -hmm. um get his kratom. Is is there much of that do you know? Uh I mean, of course it's not legal to do that, so I'm sure you couldn't have statistics on mm -hmm. it because nobody's going to admit to be doing that. But, I mean, I know mm -hmm. in general there's probably um, drug tourism in Amsterdam. Oh, yeah, drug tourism in Amsterdam is, like, pretty much a very common thing. Yeah. Uh, so whenever we are talking about uh, Kratom as such, uh, mm, I know that there is a relatively huge user base in England hmm. and people who are into drugs and uh, into uh, uh, wellness or into alternative states of consciousness and so on uh, mm, are familiar with Kratom. Like they know that it exists. Uh, there are some possibilities for people to actually even get Kratom to UK. There, of course, there are always like possible smuggling channels, uh, but uh, I cannot really tell you what are the numbers over there. Yeah, yeah, I guess it's hard to do where it's illegal. Um, and is is there anything mm -hmm. else going on that you want to talk about? Yeah, like uh, generally, let's see. We have uh, already spoken about what's going on in Czech Republic. We also spoke about our next moves in the Netherlands. I hope that uh, uh, Prime Minister Rutte is not listening. If not, then uh, Mark, I would like to have uh, a meeting with you for a coffee before you are out of office. <laughs> And um, then uh, uh, another thing is, uh, oh yes, generally also we have like a little bit problem with Belgium uh, at this moment mm -hmm. regarding Kratom. And something is brewing up in Norway, but uh, generally nor we don't really know. Like I've heard about like maybe five people taking Kratom in Norway <laughs> put together. And one of them is a Kratom advocate. Uh, so in that small 13 million uh, people country, uh, something is going to happen, but I cannot say. So at this moment, we're good. And by the way, are you coming to Phuket? What, what is it? Uh, oh, like, no, we are going to have an industry uh, conference in Phuket uh, at the end of the month. Oh, no, no, no. I would love to, but I haven't even heard, heard about it, actually. Oh, really? Oh God! Oh, like, uh, uh, I thought that the uh, like you, Brian Gallagher, the guy behind <laughs> Kratom Science, knows everything. <laughs> no, I barely. I can't get to the conferences here. It's there are a lot of money. There is going to be first international Kratom conference happening between twenty second and twenty third of August uh, in Phuket. Yeah. So basically, any kind of big fish from Kratom industry is going to be over there. If somebody who is listening uh, to the podcast and wants to you know, meet up, you can easily find me on LinkedIn or on our website. 
And uh, one more thing uh, that you might be actually aware, uh, and this is something that perhaps I can already share. is that Malaysian government is going to legalize Kratom in uh, two weeks. Really? I have not heard that yes. yet either. Wow. Yeah, so basically as of uh, next weekend, uh, so like as of 13th uh, of uh, August, uh, Kratom is going to be legalized in uh, Malaysia together wow. with cannabis. Uh, and I, oh okay. man, I wish I could go to that conference in Thailand. I think if I would have known about it uh, earlier, I might have planned to go over there. Yeah, yeah. Let, let us know how it goes, uh, uh, and I'll probably write an article yeah. about it at least. Like, I've been talking to a friend of mine that uh, I have a talent to be at the wrong place at the wrong time, <laughs> uh, and basically that's re resulting that I get all the information and people are coming to me. <laughs> it's a talent it's definitely a talent yeah, yeah. it's not a bad problem <laughs> mm -hmm. but uh thanks a yeah, lot sure, man sure sure yeah take care um, it's always a pleasure to talk with you brian yeah, like, seriously it's really a pleasure thanks it's, it's likewise uh and keep in touch how about that kratom is going to be legal in malaysia he said along with cannabis as well thank you jacob chintala european kratom alliance is at eka.eu check us out on twitter at kratom science tiktok at kradm science on facebook Please like, subscribe, share, rate, review this podcast. The music is Memories of Thailand by Risey. Kratom Science Podcast is produced by me, Brian Gallagher, for KratomScience.com. Take care.